This is a video I thought about making for quite a while, playing Graveyard Keeper, but the thing of it is, I'm actually a Graveyard Keeper. Like, I'm not joking, that's my job. I work at a cemetery, and I tend to the graveyard. I dig the holes, I set the monuments, I lower the casket into the ground, I close up the hole with the dirt, and I tend to the graveyard. So I thought it would be cool to play Graveyard Keeper, and you know, just kind of go through, and as we're playing, I can tell stories about weird things I've seen, and how much this game relates to being a real-life graveyard keeper. What they got right, what they got wrong, how realistic is it? So let's do it, I'm just gonna start a new game. And I've played this game before, quite a few times. Uh, it's been a little while, so I might be a little rusty, but I have played it. Never on PC, I always play it on console. Um, right off the bat, I'm not dead. I'm still alive, at least I think I am. So, there's a slight difference there. He's dead, I'm not. Ha ha ha. Just kidding. Alright, so we're in. Uh, straight off the bat, I do not have a house um, at the cemetery. We do have a workshop. It's uh, a little run down and shitty, but uh, we don't have a house. And, um, alright, another thing straight off the bat, we usually do not go digging into graves where things are already buried. Typically that is no bueno. However, sometimes families will pay a lot of money and request that we dig up their loved one to move them somewhere else. Sometimes we'll dig up a body and uh, it can be cremated after the fact, you know, it doesn't matter how long it's been. Sometimes it's been there for 40 years and it's nothing but skeletal remains and an old rusted up metal casket. But, you know, you do what the family wants. I think uh, a final resting place should be a final resting place. And I like to joke that it was the semi-final resting place. Um, so yeah, we're talking to Jerry, and uh, our guy is pretty confused about what's going on and why there's a jumping, talking skull who can make words while his jaw is clacking off the ground. That's talent. And of course, the donkey with the cart. Um, you know, the people that bring me the caskets, I like to think that they're donkeys, because they can be pretty stupid, uh, but they are not actually donkeys. Alright, so of course we have a fresh corpse. So yeah, another difference from my job, they don't just bring me the bodies. They send them to what they call the Preparation Center, which would basically be your standard morgue. They do it all in one building, very modernized. You get your uh, medical examiner to look over the body, you do the autopsy, um, and even the cremation and embalming, all under one roof. Um, I also do not extract flesh from the bodies. That is something I do not do, typically. <laughs> And I don't eat the flesh, I can't turn it into tasty burgers. And now we are taking the body out, where I carry it on my shoulders or over my head. No uh, coffin, no casket, nothing. We're just carrying it to the graveyard, and we're going to talk to Jerry again. Let's bury it. This is actually somewhat accurate here. So I have what they call a uh, internment layout assessment which is basically a piece of paperwork that I receive uh, with the decedent's name and their information and where in the cemetery they are going to be buried. And I have to go out there, find the space, and use uh, like land surveying techniques to uh, properly measure it out to make sure we're not going to run into anybody else and put the person in the right spot. So that kind of relates to the blueprint there. I guess that's a, a good summation of that process. And uh, yeah, the digging of the grave, as you saw, just took like a second and a half. Uh, it takes us a good 45 minutes, even with a bobcat with a backhoe attachment. It's still quite a process. I usually start with a shovel, I cut the perimeter of the sod, and from there we'll set up some plywood and get our tractor that we dump the dirt into and the backhoe into place. And from there we can dig, and uh, you know, we got kind of relatively small machinery, so it still takes 45 minutes or so. But I'm, you know, I've posted a few Conquer speedruns here, I like speedrunning. So I, I, I've gotten it done, like, I, I would say, I've never timed it, but I would say 28 minutes would probably be my top time of digging a grave. So put that on the top of the leaderboard on speedrun.com. And, you know, I, I do deal with some churches. I am not a religious person, which is funny. I thought when I applied for this job, I was like, oh man, it's going to be nothing but religious nuts working here. And that is not the case at all. I think most of the people I work with are not religious at all. Some of them are, but not like crazy, crazily so. Uh, so I do not really deal with bishops or deacons, whatever this guy is. 
Um, but I do, you know, I see priests, obviously priests come out to funeral services to bless the body and sprinkle their holy water, whatever the family wants to have done. Sometimes it's a rabbi. And I've seen a few um, Vietnamese funerals where I don't really know too much about their religion, but they were burning a lot of incense, I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, so all this shit is bringing down the value of the cemetery. And this actually is some of the uh, work that I do. Obviously, if there's the old dead shrubbery that is looking unsightly, it will be removed and probably replanted with something new and, and spiffy looking. And that'll be done by me. That's part of my job of maintaining the grounds. It actually is part of my job to, you know repair um some of the markers that's what we call them we call them markers we don't usually call them headstones uh, i think marker just rolls off the tongue a little more but yeah I've, I've made plenty of repairs usually with uh we have granite markers with a bronze plaque attached to the top of it and oftentimes they get dinged up and dingy and very dull and uh, i will bring them back to our workshop and i will give them a new paint job polish up the lettering and make them look spiffy and new again. And I actually really enjoy that part because I am a bit artistic and it makes me feel like I get to be a little creative at work. But right now I am just repairing all these markers. So they're leading me to the village, I guess, to uh, go poke around. And uh, we're going into the Dead Horse Tavern. Uh, I don't have a tavern in my cemetery, nor do I really nearby, unfortunately. I'm not much of a drinker, but hey, every once in a while it'd be nice to uh, leave work and go get a pint. So let's go ahead and sleep uh, the rest of the night away, get some energy back, and we can see it is becoming daytime. I'm just going to go ahead and let that energy bar fill all the way up. Still morning after all. Oh, hello, there's a ghost. Oh yeah, that's one thing I should probably talk about, because that's one thing that a lot of people are intrigued about. I, for one, am skeptical. I don't believe in ghosts. Sorry if that offends you in any way, but that's how I feel. And in my eight years of working at the cemetery, I have never seen a ghost. Take that information as you will. Maybe it's because I'm skeptical I haven't seen anything, but I, for one, don't really think that that's a thing that happens. I have had a lot of encounters with voodoo. I found all kinds of things. I found dead birds that were mutilated in disgusting ways. There was a chicken that was all cut open with his head cut off and wrapped in a uh, burlap and left out on somebody's grave. And of course, I'm the one that has to clean that shit up. I'm not too happy about all that. Um, but the big thing, and I was not able to find much information when I tried to look into this, but we had a person who would come, we would have open graves with the concrete burial vault bottom down in there, you know, prepared for the next day when we would actually do the burial. And we kept having somebody who would come and put eggplants down into the vaults. And I inspected it the first time we had this happen, because I'm like, obviously this is not supposed to be here. The family did not put this here. What the hell? So I inspected it, and uh, it was an eggplant that had a bunch of slits cut into it. And inside those slits were pieces of paper, and the paper was rolled up, so I unfurled the rolled paper. And on each one of them, it had the uh, name of a woman. Same woman, and same name on all of the paper. And then there was another hole at the top that had a Polaroid kind of picture, and uh, it was a picture of a woman. I'm assuming it was the woman whose name was written on the pieces of paper. And so I posted this, you know, censored online, asking people what the hell is this? Who has information about it? And people basically gave me the obvious answer. It's it's voodoo, hoodoo, santeria, what have you. Um, but I couldn't really get an answer about the intent. And of course, people got mad at me also for touching it, which I thought was ridiculous because it's my job to bury the person that's supposed to be in that spot. I'm not going to leave it there. <laughs> but some people are not so understanding, I guess. Can't just leave voodoo around. Um, but yeah, we had that happen quite a few times, and it was always the same woman's name. And I took it to mean he's, this person is putting these eggplants into a grave. I was assuming he meant this woman ill will. I'm assuming it's a man. Uh, I'm assuming he meant this woman ill will, and it was some kind of curse to doom her, to fuck up her life, or, you know, have her meet an untimely demise. But yeah, it was always the same woman's name. We had this happen a good four or five times. And then there was a point where, uh, you know, after we bury somebody and the dirt has been filled into the grave, uh, we have to go back with a tamper and tamp the ground down 
you know, to make it firm. We don't we don't do this in front of the family because it's like we're beating on the, the top of the grave. But if we don't, then the grave sinks and it sinks and it's very soft ground. And then we put the uh, the sod on top, you know, to complete the process and, you know, get the, the yard back to how it was. Um, but when I was doing this a few times, I would be tamping the, the ground with the tamper. And I kept hearing a noise like a, like a tink. Something was dinging off the, the bottom of the metal tamper. And so I kind of reached my hand into the soft sand and I pulled out a, a glass jar and a stu it was full of liquid, some kind of dark liquid. And stupidly, I opened it and I swear to God, it smelled like vomit. So I kind of just dumped it out in a different spot, you know, not on anybody's grave or anything like that. And uh, it was full of like nails and uh, like more pictures of a different woman. So I, I assume this was a different person. But yeah, I was like, okay, vomit, nails, and the picture of a woman inside a glass jar placed into the earth on somebody's grave. That was bizarre. But I guess that comes with the territory of working in a cemetery. Um, here's a, a funny little anecdote. So one thing I've learned is uh, when you're burying somebody, I'm sure you've seen what a, a lowering device looks like in movies and games and TV shows and stuff like that. Typically when we lower it, we have to be on either side of it and kind of guide the... Uh, casket as it goes down make sure it goes into the concrete burial vault one thing i've learned is that you don't want to keep anything in your front pocket when you're doing this because things can easily fall out and guess where they go they go right down smack off the casket and down into the burial vault and you do not want to have that happen <laughs> i've had it happen before i had a water bottle fall out of my pocket and that was very embarrassing but my old co-worker we were burying, funny enough, the town sheriff. I swear to God, it was a giant service. Very important guy. You know, he was he was known. So there was a good four or five hundred people there. And uh, we're lowering the uh, casket down. My friend has his phone in his front pocket. And of course, he leans over and out comes his phone. Smacks off the casket. Goes right down the side of the casket into the burial vault. So we kind of just had to play it off like nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> nobody really said anything. I don't even know if anybody noticed, luckily. I don't know how, but nobody said anything. And the family left before we closed up the hole entirely. I was able to kind of climb down in there, and uh, with a little gopher grip type uh, grabby arm, I was able to pull his phone out. But I was a little pissed off at him. <laughs> I've, I told him before, but I guess it's one of those things that you really just gotta learn by experience. Don't keep shit in your front pockets. I'm talking to the bar man, because I believe this is the guy that will buy the burial certificates from me. Um, here's another thing that's different. I actually do look at the burial certificate. The funeral director will come over to me, and he'll hand me the burial certificate. And I verify that the location, the method of burial, and the name all matches. Just to make sure, you know, another set of eyes on the paperwork. To make sure that everything is going appropriately. Because this is a very important thing. You don't want to mess things up because the consequences are quite dire and it's the wrong thing to do for the family. So we want to make sure we get everything right so I have to double check the paperwork. I don't, however, keep it and I don't get money for it. I get money hourly. So I can't just bring it to a tavern and sell it to them. I wish I could. That'd be a nice little side hustle, a little more income, but that is not how it works. Let's see, let's dig this body up like it's just that simple. And, uh... Here's another thing I can't do at work. I can't dig up a body and just bring it over to the closest body of water and throw it in the river. That's something I cannot do. Nor would I. I would feel uh, very horrible about doing such a thing. But there he goes, in this fictional game, where consequences don't matter so much. And you know, I, I do a lot of landscaping, I do a lot of hole digging. I don't do a lot of woodworking, sadly, because I actually really like woodworking. But I don't get to do a whole lot of it in my day to day. Occasionally I do, but it's usually just making forms for concrete to make foundations to place markers upon. Um, but that's really about it, just chopping up some 2x4s and nailing them together. That is the extent of my woodworking. There comes a point in the game where you can craft your own headstones. That is not something I do either. We have an outside company that does that with computers. I'm sure they use like CNC's and uh, sandblasting techniques and all that kind of stuff. We actually have a guy that comes to engrave our mausoleum doors who uses a sandblaster with crushed up garnet as the abrasive to cut through and he uses vinyl sheets that he puts over the door with just the lettering cut out. He blasts it out with a crushed garnet to engrave the lettering. 
so all of that is outsourced. That is not part of my duty. So that is, again, another difference between real-life graveyard keeping and uh, this game where you kind of do it all in, in one. And I think that's about it. I think that kind of covers most of the basics. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was, uh, it was a fun one to make. I hope you had fun and learned a little something about what it's like being a real graveyard keeper. So until next time, I'll see you, and consider subscribing if you enjoyed this kind of thing. Later.